So today in this video we will be learning about back propagation in neural networks. Right? So in order to understand back propagation first let's understand a basic neural network structure. Right? So in order to understand neural networks let's look at this diagram. So basically x is our input that is being passed to a neuron we call it f1 and then this f1 outputs and this f1 neuron impl uh, implements some calculations and gives an output y this output provided by f1 is further passed to another neuron f2 and then finally f2 implements some calculations and then gives another output called z so let's consider this as our final output right so when we move in this direction so basically passing an input calculating uh, in a neuron and then providing another output further processing it this is called forward propagation or you can say forward pass right but when we want to go in a direction opposite to the flow of this diagram that process is called back propagation which is basically our topic for today right so basically what happens is in back propagation we calculate something known as loss now loss is basically the difference between our predicted value and our actual values so whenever we use any learning algorithms be it linear regression or logistic regression or any deep learning model we have something known as predicted values which are the values that we predict using a learning algorithm right and our actual values are something that we already have in our data set that we use to train our model so the difference between these two values that is our actual and uh, predicted is something that is known as loss so now we what we want is to have a minimum loss function we want this value to be as minimum as possible so this is where back propagation comes into picture we'll look at it in detail using a further diagrams so in order to calculate back propagation or uh, say minimize the loss which is basically calculating the gradient or you can say partial differentiation of our functions so let's consider z as our loss since this is a final output let's consider it as the loss so now in case we want to minimize z all we have to do is calculate its partial uh, differentiation with respect to x but you know that is not possible directly first we need to calculate its partial differentiation with respect to y and then with respect to x so this is where chain rule comes in the picture right so we can say partial differentiation of z with respect to x is basically equal to partial differentiation of z with respect to y multiplied by partial differentiation of y with respect to x so this is basically us calculating the gradient of z now in order to understand the neural networks let's look at this diagram very closely right so suppose we have a data set having two features input 1 and input 2 right and we have one target feature let's call it uh say we have input 1 input 2 and another target variable let's call it target right so we will be having some sort of values over here let's le let's consider any sort of values over here right so we will have some training data we will have some test data and what we're going to do is calculate target variable in the end so this can be achieved with the help of neural networks usually neural networks are used when our data set is really big and complicated we've taken a simple example over here so what happens is each neuron is connected to every other neuron 
you can see this, you can see this neuron is connected to this this one is connected to all of these other neurons so basically this neuron is also connected to all these neurons so what happens here is we pass our input that is for the pass to a hidden layer you can see this is a hidden layer 1 and this is our hidden layer 2 so these hidden layers can have n number of neurons right and then once these hidden layers calculate an output it is displayed by the output layer so you can see here there are variables called w1 w2 and so on till w6 so what are these these are the weights now weights are basically something that we multiply with uh, each input that we receive from our layer so you let's try and calculate our hidden layer right let's call it h1 let's call this h2 so if we calculate h1 it is basically let's call this i1 and let's call this i2 so it is basically i1 into w1 plus i2 into w3 so basically this and this is what's reaching to h1 over here similarly we can calculate h2 it is i1 into w2 plus i2 into w4 simple and then finally our output layer would be something like h1 into w5 plus h2 into w6 so what these weights here do they basically define how much importance we need to give to a certain input right so these weights play the most crucial role in identifying what our output or our predicted value is going to be so in order to have optimized weights we calculate the gradients gradient of the loss but a single pass or a single calculation of a loss function is not enough because our data set our neural networks are very complicated when we deal with deep learning models so this is where gradient descent comes in the picture right so gradient descent so gradient descent is basically a repetition of calculating gradients until you reach a minimum point right let's say this is our initial inputs or you can say the weights and then what gradient descent will try to achieve is it will try to bring our uh, loss function sorry this is our initial loss and then what is going to tr try to do is it's going to try to bring it to the minimum or like you can say the global minimum value let's call this weight and then let's call this a function right so let's go ahead and look at this computational graph so this is what basically happens in neural networks right sorry so basically these are our two inputs x and y they're being passed in an activation function now what this activation function is doing it's basically multiplying our inputs with our weights right and performing some calculations deciding which input has more uh, weight has more priority and then accordingly predicting our output so in order to better understand let's look at this example of linear regression cost function so we know linear regression has the formula of y hat equal to mx plus c y equal to mx plus c is basically the equation for a straight line right y hat over here is a predicted value this is what we are predicting m is the slope x is our data point any data point that we are considering at the point and c is the intercept right so as you can see we have a sort of sample diagram over here this is not what actually happens in a neural network these are our sample activation functions this, this is not what an actual activation function looks like this is just taken to make the calculation simpler and to make the understanding more clear right so what's happening here is we're taking the inputs of x and m where x is our uh, data point and m is our slope we're multiplying it and we're storing the result in a so a is basically m into x right and then we're passing c as another input which is basically our intercept and then we're adding a and c so basically y hat is mx plus c over here and then since 
we've already seen that loss is basically uh, your predicted value minus your actual value and the whole square of it right so this is what we need to minimize we need to find the partial derivative of loss with respect to x because x is our data point right so we need to minimize this value so we're going to find the gradient but in order to do that we need to understand this right so what we're going to do is we're going to subtract y hat and y y is our actual value and we're storing it in s so s is basically y hat minus y and then as you can see we're squaring the uh, s variable so loss is basically s square right so now let's go ahead and form the chain rule for calculating the derivative of loss so it's with respect to x right so first we're going to jump over here and then we jump over here and this is how we formulate our chain rule so it's going to be derivative of loss with respect to s into derivative of s with respect to y hat into derivative of y hat with respect to a and then finally derivative of a with respect to x so this is our final formula to calculate the gradient of loss so let's go ahead and calculate derivative of loss with respect to derivative of s so we know loss is nothing but s square right you can see here loss is s square so we will just su substitute the value of loss and then perform partial derivation so it is going to be 2s right so this is our first equation and then similarly we calculate derivative of s with respect to y hat so we know s is nothing but y hat minus y so we just substitute with respect to y hat and this is going to turn out to be 1 this is our second equation and then similarly we'll calculate y hat with respect to a so we know y hat is nothing but mx plus c where mx is a right so we can say y hat is equal to a minus c let's substitute on a so this is also going to turn out to be one this is our third equation then let's calculate a with respect to x right so we know a is nothing but m into x you can refer to the diagram above and upon differentiation it's going to turn out to be m plus 1 right so now this is what this is how we calculate the gradients the gradient of our loss but in order to have an actual value let's just go ahead and substitute the values for each variable right let's say m is equal to 1 let's say x is equal to 2 let's say c over here let's say c over here is equal to 1 again and then let me just clear this out let's say c is also equal to 1 let's say our y is equal to 2 so if m is 1 x is 2 a will turn out to be 2 right m into x and if a is 2 c is 1 y is going to turn out to be 3 according to the formula mx plus c right similarly we can calculate s s is nothing but y hat minus y so it is going to be 1 and then loss is just the square of s so it is going to be 1 again right so let's go ahead and substitute so 2s s is 1 so it's sorry 2 this is 1 this also remains as 1 m plus 1 m is 1 1 plus 1 is 2 right so these are our final values let's substitute these values in this formula that we calculated so derivative of loss with respect to s is 2 derivative of s with respect to y hat is 1 uh, derivative of y hat with respect to a is also 1 and derivative of a with respect to x 
turns out to be 2 right so multiplying it we get 4 as our loss after uh, calculating the gradient like the gradient of loss is 4 this can further be minimized by increasing our epochs epochs is basically the number of times uh, our entire data set is passed into an algorithm and that algorithm is basically gradient descent right so this is how we calculate the gradient in back propagation so back propagation is all about calculating the gradients reducing the weights finding the optimum weights to reduce the loss loss is nothing but the difference between our predicted value and our actual value right so before concluding this video let's quickly look at the hands-on on our Jupyter notebook right so as you can see first I've imported all the libraries mainly pandas numpy I've, I've imported tensor data set random split neural network and test uh, train test split from sklearn I've created a very basic neural network in case you want to know more about neural networks there's already a video available you can go ahead and check it out so we've used linear activation function over here as you can see and we've passed our input layers, our hidden layers and our output layer, right? And then we've used ReLU function in our forward pass. And then I've initiated my neural network using model variable. I've read my data set in DF variable. This is my iris data set. And then all I'm going to do is perform basic exploratory data analysis on my data set. As you can see, I'm checking for null values since there are no null values, I can go ahead and check the data type. You can see there is only one data type that needs to be changed, which is object. And species is going to be our target variable. These are our input features, right? So we go ahead and check what kind of values does species store. And then we'll just map all these values with a float. So Setosa gets 0.0, .0 Versicolor gets 1.0, and Virginica gets 2.0. Right, so we map these values and then we check our data types. Now all of our features have the same data type that is float. Then we assign x and y a variable uh, from our data set and then we go ahead and split it. Now since we want to uh, pass our data in a neural network, we need it to be in tensor data type. Right, so we go ahead and convert it to tensor and we're going to retain our initial data type which is float. So we use float tensor. And since our y train is just 1, 0, 1 and 2, we use long tensor over here. We use cross entropy loss to calculate the loss. And we use our Adam optimizer to optimize our model. And then we go ahead and calculate our predicted variable by passing our training data into the model. And then we store the predicted outcomes in our output. Then we go ahead and calculate the loss, which is basically the difference between our outputs and our actual data our loss is initially 1.124 which is really high so in order to minimize it we will go ahead and perform back propagation using epochs so we've defined thousand epochs over here we run a loop for a thousand epochs we calculate the predicted variables predicted outcomes store it in outputs repeat the process similarly we uh, calculate the loss and then we optimize it and then we calculate our loss uh, and then we perform backward propagation over here as you can see and then we optimize it and then as you can see on our thousandth epoch our loss is just 0 0.0523 right so this is how back propagation helps optimize your model by reducing the loss so i hope this was clear this is all about back propagation i hope you liked the video if you did Hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you in the next video.